I don't know, Level Mate Pro. You think another four inches still? This is the dad life right here. Look at this blowout diaper. How does that, how do you, how, what? This is the kind of stuff I see in Asia. Cows. <laughs> <laughs> been on the RV all summer and had just arrived to Disney's Fort Wilderness from the Keys when we got the call that my grandfather had passed away. So we packed up and we're headed north and we are just now arriving to West Virginia on our way to Worcester, Ohio. Stop. This one is a challenge. Parking brake, park. The problem with doing this is that like, it always moves a little bit and then it throws everything off. So you still play the game a little bit. It's definitely better than using a bubble level. Okay, turns out I'm now competing with the weather because that's part for the course. Most times that I've either set up we're torn down. Oh, it's raining already. It has been, yeah, it's already raining. It's like, uh, so that's a thing. We had just enough power cord to get to the opposite side of the camper for power. And I can't tell you how many of these that I've come into recently that when I pull up to them and plug, they're already, the breakers are already on. I'm pretty sure that's bad practice. But, um, so I made sure these were off, plugged in my surge protector, and then I'm gonna switch it to on verify on the surge protector that everything is lighting up green that means everything is good to go and there's no errors or issues so all green is good to go so i'm gonna turn it back off i'm gonna plug my shoreline in with one hand as i hold the camera because that's smart and flip that back on that is now good to go I might wait to do water till later. It's underneath the camper. And... Okay, we're level. We got power. Those are the most important parts. I can run AC. It's still a bit hot up here, although the weather coming in is really cooling it off. I'll, I'll tell you guys where we're at. It's a really cool place, and we'll check it out when it's not raining. made it through the weather last night we sort of just hung out we actually went out last night and uh, caught some lightning bugs which I haven't seen in many many years we used to run around Ohio at my grandparents house and catch lightning bugs we haven't seen any so long we got here and they were everywhere yeah so we caught a few and that was cool it was fun we are in Beckley West Virginia we are staying at the Beckley exhibition coal mine campground really cool really neat area we're gonna go do a uh, coal mine tour here in just a little bit. All right, so we are at this expedition thing. We're gonna do this museum. It's an underground, I think there's a railroad thing. I think we're getting on a train and going like on a railroad underground through this coal mine thing. I'm super pumped about it. I love this kind of stuff. The people that work in these coal mines are like the heart of our country. I really want to know more about it. Say hi. Excited for the tour. Learn about the coal mines. Uh, safety wise, stay seated. Keep your hands behind these rails. Don't drag a top or like cut your fingers. If you give snuff chew, that's all right. All them old coal miners chew. They said they spit out the dust, see? <laughs> all they got was heartburn and indigestion in the <laughs> Gotta work safe. Coal mines here opened in 1890. That was mined over 120 years ago. That is original works of the Phillips family. And on top of that coal, you can see they mined about a foot of rock. Okay, this would be a working room 
for a hand loader working for coal companies back in those days. There'd only be one man in here. He could leave his tools in here. Now if that miner could not load six cars in a 12 hour shift, he might have to stay 15, 18. He had to get six cars in this low coal or the company would fire him. Our government just passed a bill recently where I think they're gonna start building computer chips over here. This bill was passed. They use these rare earth minerals. I had an engineer back here in January, he told me this old red looking stuff, or orange looking, said that's full of those rare earth minerals. There's some kind of mineral in there they use to make those chips with. If they go wide open with that, there'll be more jobs and get people to work here in this state. Such a cool thing to experience, and especially for the kids to uh, to hear the stories. That guy was super cool. He'd worked in these coal mines for you know 40 something years. Again, it's just you know the coal miners are really like a lifeline uh, for a lot of our society. We've got to get back up and pack the camper in. It's almost noon. It's pretty late. It's 11:30. Check out is at noon, so I got to scramble, get that thing packed up, and then on to our final destination. Uh, for this leg of the trip, which is Worcester, Ohio. Good job. All right. Well, let's unhook it from here. So, unscrew that. You gotta kind of hold this thing straight. Go ahead. Unscrew it. Okay. And just twist to the side and it pulls straight out. That was pretty quick, girls. I think we got packed. That was 30 minutes from when we said we needed to start packing it up. So that was pretty oh, good. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 30 cool. minutes. Look at the power lines right here. We got to dodge all these power lines. I was yes. <laughs> Power poles and a bossy wife. What could be better? <laughs> what could be better? I got to steer clear of these low trees because that's where all the power lines are swinging down to these houses. Who runs lines like this? This is. This is the kind of stuff I see in Asia. Look at that view. Another fun fact is that uh, this is where my grandma grew up here in this area. My uncle even commented on Facebook last night. He was like, hey, make sure the girls know that this is where Grandma Mary, you know, played in these mountains and stuff. And uh, it's beautiful. But it's also interesting this morning how cool it was. It was 66 or so degrees this morning when I got up and I sat out side drank some coffee hung out with Hans there we were in Key West uh, a week and a half ago it was like the surface of the Sun hot yeah. it was 95 98 100 degrees at 9 o'clock in the morning and uh, now it's in the 60s we were not dressed for northern weather no. at all last night we also went shopping and we were able to finally find the proper dress for Cameron so everybody's got what we need for the service. Yes. That's the most important thing. The, the thing that we all feel strongly about is uh, being being dressed properly for my grandfather's funeral. Okay, so it's another couple hundred miles on 77 North. This has this estimated arrival at 4.16 p.m., probably more like five o'clock. Let's hope we don't hit traffic. Yesterday we hit traffic, set us back about two and a half hours. Uh, that sort of sucked. So hopefully we can sort of stay on track. We'll stop and eat. I'm thinking about a five o'clock arrival, which is our latest kind of scheduled arrival that we've had yet, except for, because we've arrived everywhere about three, four o'clock p.m. So this will be our latest day. Okay, we are in the general vicinity of the RV park here, and uh, we're—I think it's just technically Dundee, Ohio. Is that right? Wilmot. Wilmot. Anyways, we're within a few minutes here, but gotta be real careful. We are in Amish country now. We don't want to hit any horse and buggies. You know what I'm saying? So we'll get set up. Um, my mom texts us so that there was supposed to be some weather. Of course, I'm always setting up and tearing down in the rain. I feel like car wash definitely have to get to the car wash this truck needs a wash so bad and I'm gonna do it right there 
the RV needs washed too, but I'll save that for another time. Probably not until we get home. Look at the cute farm. Some cows. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I swear we didn't rehearse that. <laughs> Cameron, I think the only thing I'm worried about is that picnic table. Otherwise, I think I'm wide open. You weren't even watching the picnic table. <laughs> this is uh, this is the dad life right here. Look at this blowout diaper. How does that? How do you? How? What? Oh, don't touch me. Oh. Short. Yeah, that's over a... and she's touching it. Like I don't know what to do. I'm trying. Hey, go borrow a power washer. <laughs> that kid is the. She's so happy about it too. This it is, is the a... Evergreen this RV is park. Uh, we're going to Worcester, Ohio, is where my grandparents live. But this RV park is gorgeous. Rolling hills, tons of grass. White it's gorgeous. Butterfly. Finally, we get a break from driving. We also get a break from Florida and the heat. It feels nice out, it's right? It's so nice. Oh yeah. So this was an interesting one. It wants it 13 inches up in the front. And so I went up, went up, went up, and I maxed out the jack. So I was like, shoot. So now we're stacking some blocks under the front to try to get it up all the way. And I was like, there's no way. When I had it maxed out, I was like, this thing feels way too high in the front. And um, by eye, it just looked insane. But this is actually a, a pretty good slope down. I don't really like stacking that many blocks under the front of this thing, but I do have it all chalked up and then I'll put the stabilizer jacks down so it's not going to go anywhere. It's just like, you know. So we're adding even more blocks to it at the moment and it'll go up. I even checked it with the bubble level because I was like, I don't know, Level Mate Pro, you think another four inches still? Bubble level doesn't lie either, you know, it still wanted it up in the front, so adding a few more blocks. Doesn't that look kind of, it doesn't even look like anything on camera, it just looks like, yeah, it's level. It seems like five feet off the ground up front. It feels it's level. Amazing. It's so nice here. <laughs>